initiative is really about creating a new way for government to do business with Aboriginal communities. The current models, they haven't worked. As we go forward, the solutions have to come from within the communities. To tailor things to what are the local opportunities and what are the local needs. To make an economic development difference in our lives. To fixing the inequities that exist within our communities. And we all know what we need and we need the government to listen. There's got to be a mutual respect between government and Aboriginal people. Our world is very complex. We come from a real strong, cultural, proud history. This is about what we can do to put in place for our future generations. And we need to get together. We need to lead the way. It's about us taking control of where we want to go. One of the principles to the Aboriginal Regional Authority is really around creating certainty. Creating certainty for Aboriginal communities and creating certainty for government in how we interact with each other. I think one of the challenges for contemporary Australian governments, whether at the national, state or local level, is to rethink, reconceptualise um, and rebuild a relationship with Aboriginal nations. It provides government with an opportunity to, to come back to the table with Aboriginal people, to talk about what's worked, what hasn't worked, to jointly um, determine the future and what that means both in terms of community aspirations but also for government service delivery and service planning. So whatever model we develop has to be flexible enough to be able to meet and cater to the needs of each of our individual um, Aboriginal communities across the state. Well, all the evidence says that if you want to address the, the big issues that Indigenous nations are dealing with, you have to make an investment into those Aboriginal nations. And an investment into those Aboriginal nations means you need to invest in their representative structures. In acknowledging that, there will be obviously different levels of support that will be required. That can incorporate things like um, economic opportunities, both in terms of job creation, um, Aboriginal business and enterprise development in the, in the state, as well as looking at the assets that already exist across our state. For example, the land that we already hold in trust and one of the opportunities that rests there to build an economic base for Aboriginal people in the state. We identified four trial site areas um, who have then been working with an independent consultant body to, if you like, unpack what a regional authority model will look like to develop potential future policy. The Aboriginal Regional Authority um, process is about rebuilding the capacity of Aboriginal people to take control of their own futures and their own destinies. And that responsibility has to be that that's owned by Aboriginal nations. Governments come and go, governments' corporate memory doesn't necessarily stay and exist. Aboriginal corporate memory stays and exists and Aboriginal institutions and their organisations will build their future. My involvement when I became chair was how am I going to place Ghana in a, in a better position than what it has been in the past and also to uplift its credibility with state governments, local governments and even more importantly with its own people and it's about being involved in the decision-making processes um, across all the sectors that we are always talking about, health, housing, education and employment and of course trying to, to get our land um, or some of Grand Land back. It was how we were going to move forward um, together because there's Northern Ghana people, there's Southern Ghana people, and there's Central Ghana people. That was the first task in setting something structured where we don't go through a lot of the in-house fighting, in-house argument, which causes turmoil amongst our own people. We want to have a legacy. We want to put some sort of structure in place that we can say, doesn't matter who the chairperson is or who, what family group is there, it's for everybody and it has to be there for everybody for the future. The other aspect of working with Ghana is that I've gone and door knocked on 
council's office, giving that garden has got a huge territory stretching from Cape Jervis up to Crystal Brook and, you know, the foothills of the Adelaide Hills. So created relationships with the Minister's staff, I've created relationships with the Premier's staff, but more importantly, I, I, I've created relationships with our people is the strength that lies in them being one, because individually, we can't do it. Ghana country goes over 29 councils. There's, you know, complex sets of um, negotiations and they're very diverse. You know, we're here and we're here to do business. And a lot of this will centre around workplace engagement, employment, heading towards an economic strategy, putting Ghana in a good position where we can engage and empower our young people. This work has been going on for many, many years. You know, it's a, it's a big task um, for people who are volunteers. We're all volunteers. We don't get paid uh, to do all this work. Um, we have to do it because we believe in that there must be something done for our people. In terms of the regional authority for us, what it has proven was the capacity to bring five organisations that were semi-operational and acting independently to not compete but to collaborate for the big picture for our whole of our community. The first thing we did was talk to Narendra, looked at their structures, looked at our dynamics and, our, and scope of what our local environment was and then developed our structure to our needs. A lot of elders want to come back to Point Pierce to live but there's just no housing available. Um, there's also employment issues. Um, there's a lot of community members at Point Pierce that are unemployed, but there are also other gaps as well that needs to be addressed. And maybe the regional partnership ag agreement could do that. My vision for our regional authority is to be financially independent, not relying on the 12 monthly funding cycle, which keeps our people in poverty. Regardless of what government do, they can and do change their mind. And they do cut off the tap. And if we're going to break that cycle of dependence and all the social issues, we actually have to be in control of our business development and everything else. The cornerstone of the relationship that we want is the leader-to-leader -leader type process that Nut and already have. That agreement we see as being the one that will allow us then to talk to the people that need to make the decisions at the upper level. And with that, we'll then build relations with middle management because they're the people who make things happen quickly at the local level. But also not meeting on a regular basis to meet the needs of government and non-government agencies to deliver their services. Uh, I would like to see it um, strive, uh, be a better community. Yeah, just build, get more people back here because a lot of people have moved away for um, job opportunities. So if we can bring more jobs back to uh, Point Piers, then we can get you know a lot more people back to our community and get our people back on our country. We want to be involved in the fishing industry, the farming industry, or mining industry. So the construction, roadworks, the um, abalone industry. Um, they make a fortune out of our waters. Currently, we don't have a piece of that action, but we want to work with other um, businesses on York Peninsula and outside of York Peninsula, and we want to have the ability to take care of all of our country right around that peninsula. Community business is what will in underpin all of the individual and family business opportunities in the future. By 2025, I'd like to see a hundred Narunga families minimal with assets of over a million dollars. We established the Nutinger Regional Authority to create a voice 
for the whole of nation. And we identified that if we was able to speak with one voice, there'll be greater strength within our community and for us as a nation to be able to set our own agenda and allowed us to be able to sit across the tables as, as equals to be able to work through you know, major challenges and issues which you know, were, were affecting not only the state, but particularly for Nardindri. It's what we've seen over time since this country has been colonised is that there's always been a problem with what do we do with Aboriginal people? You know, where do we put them? Where do they fit? Government are even realising that they don't have the answers, whether it be health, housing, justice, education, you know, employment, generational wealth. You know, we've, we've got an enormous amount of catching up to do. And that's what it's about today, is making that road. Because it's like we only got that, that one chance of doing something. And we need to get together. We need to lead the way. Back in 2002, we came up with an idea called um, a Kungan Narendri Yanan Agreement. And what that means is listen to Narendri people talk. And it sets the framework on, you know, how the relationship needs to be structured. You know, who meets, who talks, what do we talk about? So it's built upon contract law. So it's moving away from trying to use legislation and that's been one of our foundational um, engagement strategies for a long time. They could bring all levels of government into partnerships and also cut out, I guess, the potential for government to be selective about how they consult with us, but actually create a framework that's um, supported by contracts and agreements that are more closely aligned to our values we went uh, through a very lengthy and very extensive process. And that was not only looking back at our traditional governance models um, around you know, the Nardindri Tendies, looking at how we, you know, for thousands of years, we were making our own decisions, um, how we were always going through an appropriate way of governing ourselves. You know, a lot of Nardindri um, have traveled extensively and listen and learn from, from other Aboriginal communities within Australia, as well as overseas. Well, I believe the NRA is a strong governing body for us all. I can remember uh, them sitting around the table, all the hard mind work. It's an ongoing commitment. And the work didn't stop in the office. The, the meeting, the tireless meetings that they, they put together to make this happen. So our current makeup of our regional authority is 10 community organisations, their chairs sit on the board, and then every year we elect four community members, and every month we are able to meet um, as a board to make decisions on behalf of the nation. Part of it all is the chairs, so it's strong leadership. You know, working together and taking information back to their own communities. And you look at the chairs of the organisations, they've all got their their portfolio, their, their gift to make this all work. Today I'm standing in one of our commercial nurseries. We've been able to engage in major projects through our regional authority, which then led into agreements, flowed onto contracts, which means we've got jobs on the ground for our community in, in you know, basically caring for our country. And we're experts at what we do in this country. We know this country. Stories about the land, the rivers, the mountains, we know all of that. And we all run our own countries. We've been doing it for thousands of years. You know, why we've been successful so far is it's, it's our community who are actually offering the solutions. Because of the decision making is happening within our community, not being imposed from an external source, it means we were able to retain a lot of that control. We need to carry that strength right into the future. I would like to see children growing up, grandchildren, knowing and practicing their culture every day. Our values don't change. We generally do give the same response to a lot of the questions because that's what our cultural values tell us to do. And for government at times, that's not acceptable. This, this is what we believe in this space. And so if you want to work with us, you need to come to terms with that. So where I'd like to see the Nardindri Regional Authority models, I want it to be 
the peak body that's recognised at all levels of government. If you're going to come and do business on Ngātahu country, we're the organisation you need to come and talk to. You know, sitting there and being part of negotiating with government over the past eight years in my role as a volunteer CEO of this community of Davenport, it's been really interesting watching the political game. With the government don't know when to release control over working with communities, but they're making decisions that can affect us. The Aboriginal Community Engagement Group was the beginning of um, taking back that control in the community. We have about 10 to 12 um, different organisations that sit around the table and we've always been driven by community need. We know the problem and we have many passionate people here that really want, want to be able to, to fix this problem. And there's that many support services within the city of Port Augusta to network all our resources to actually govern our own people. There are 28 to 40 different language groups in Port Augusta and people are always coming here. You know, we're at the crossroads. Uh, Non-Aboriginal Australians don't really understand what we're going through. It's very complex to try and get everyone to agree on, on where we want to go because we have to understand that we all have cultural obligations, different laws, different structures on how we're supposed to meet and it does come out sometime. Is the government got to learn how does the culture and, and traditions of us as Aboriginal people balance in today's Western society? The government need to come in person and listen to the message that we are trying to put to them. Otherwise, you're going to end up with the same problem. You know? There'll be no solution. And that's where I think um, ACAG play a vital importance. They're in a place where conversation can take place between all tiers of government, voice concerns from the community, up on a level that most community people can't get to. What we need is to have the resources to reduce the level of violence in our communities. Violence came to us from overseas. It's not normal, it was never a way of Aboriginal life. When people came here and took over our lands, took over our families and separated us from our country, separated us from our mob, um, they did the biggest damage in the world, which is why we have the intergenerational trauma that has never been addressed in this, in this country. Sentencing us to a life that really um, we shouldn't be living. This process from the Premier's get-go is an opt-in process, so communities can look at it and see how things happen, but it's important they get the information from Aboriginal people. Don't go to ARD or, or the government for their advice on how to be a part of it. Go to the Aboriginal groups already in there and look at how we, as existing regional authorities, can support you to meet your vision, because if it's not going to make an impact at the local level, it's not going to be worth it. We need to carry that strength right into the future. We have to work together. We have to realise that we're not each other's enemies. We need each other to survive in this country. We need to come together. You know, Aboriginal regional authorities allow us to, you know, look at engagement with government, but it also allows us to look at ourselves. It's about actually our, us playing our role in helping our community and our organisations and the individuals to that economic, political and social and cultural freedom that we all strive for. As Aboriginal people, we're living on borrowed time in our own country. 
Partnerships is the key word to all of this. This is a new process for government and we acknowledge that's going to be difficult for some, for some agencies. And of course we have to have the upfront conversations around the, the, the negotiables, what's, ne what's on the table and what's not on the table. That's going to be difficult and because of the implications around funding, because of the implications around the current services that are operating within communities, that there's going to be a whole lot of tough conversations around how do we actually unpack and then rebuild. The capacities of, of the Aboriginal communities have to be developed, but more importantly, government need to change. Government have to be proactive, and one of the problems with government is the left-hand side don't know what the right-hand side is doing. But they don't need to be in control all the time. That we as Aboriginal people are quite capable of being in control of our own self-determination. A lot of things are not working right now, and you've been trying all these different policies, and this is where we, as Aboriginal people, we need to influence policy. We need to make it happen. We need to. Because we know what we want and we know what we need for our young ones. You know, we've asked the hard questions of ourselves. So are government prepared to ask the hard questions of themselves? If they're not seriously prepared to address some of the big issues around how do we, how do we generate enough equity, capital, resourcing, and invest that into a commitment, then we'll be here in another 20 years time. I see this process as maybe our last chance, or some people may see it as our first chance to make an economic development difference in our lives. We know that we will start off with small successes, but we know that our children in the future will make them big successes. Yeah, when we look at the regional authorities and, and the likes of ACAG, they are our voice and that we as a people are not going to be silenced. We are the Aboriginal people of this country. We should be heading towards sovereignty. We should be heading towards a treaty. We should be doing so much more. My vision for regional authorities is that we will actually have regional authorities operating all across the state, where the relationship between Aboriginal communities, government and the broader community will be equal in the conversations that allow Aboriginal people to benefit from and participate in all the opportunities that rest here in South Australia. It takes great courage to think about how do they open up uh, Australian society in ways where power is shared far more equitably than it currently is, where there is actually a real investment and a real acknowledgement about the history of this country and about Aboriginal nations and their management of these lands and these waters for millennia, and to think about how do they create a future for all Australians, but central to that has to be the recognition of Aboriginal peoples as the first peoples.